and everybody from all different cultures together under one roof mm -hmm. and there was no problem and you know what the way I felt at the time was it was more grimier on the street than it was here in the rave in the rave everybody was together as one didn't yeah. matter who you were whether you're fat skinny whatever tall yeah. short whatever you were whatever nationality you were from you're all together as one so and it was that that made me go this is me Street Culture TV. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Yes, we've got professionals in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, as central as you what? Central as you need to be. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers, people globally. Big shout out to the global crew, because we see you as well. Um, our people's in Australia, our people's in America, South America, Europe, etc. We see you, thank you. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, if you ain't familiar with the street culture uh, and the dynamics, uh, trust me, the Killer Keller podcast got a whole heap of dynamism on the television app. Free download, iPhone, Android, free street culture, sports, baby, pod. Come on, we're live in the venue. We have... He's done that before, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we have a pioneer in the building. Oh, no, he, this, he was studying the whole way through. I was like, yeah, new, new words. Spin the words, spin the words. Um, this gentleman from author to radio to fucking internet to podcasting to countless DJs with a hardcore into drum bass jungle, everything, D to A to Z, and a spokesperson for the scene. S A S A S A S is our number one DJ oh. fantasy in the place. Oh, that's the background noises that's added it. in. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Along with all the girls in the swimming pool oh, at the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, brother? I'm good, I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm mm. a fan of the podcast. Podcast and uh, when I walked in, I thought this was um, a poster. And like, now, <laughs> wall, now, yeah. I know I'm going to send you one of my books to put up here. So Fantastic. on the next uh, podcast, you're going to see uh, my book somewhere along there. You need to get a nice yeah. spot. We'll get the we'll get the right spot. Baby. Yeah, oh, get a absolutely. nice spot. So, but yeah, man, it's good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. It's only good up to the road from me as well, yeah. which is handy. So it only took me 20 minutes to get here. The the area in which we are, which is Northwest 10, Northwest London, uh, is re renowned for it's street culture roots from hip hop to, yeah. to, to the early days yeah. of, uh, of 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 how of how hip hop came into mm. into the UK and and almost acted as a gateway into the rest of Europe, didn't it? For me, it was like going real back to when I was younger. Um, mm. Electro was my thing. Mm. I loved electro. That's my if I if I had to put my favorite all time all time music, it'd be electro, mm. <laughs> uh, because to me it was kind of like all these sounds that were just being put together. And I, it was like, and when I was young, I wasn't one of those guys that, uh, I wasn't one of those kids that's like, yeah, I want to be a DJ. I wanted to be a carpenter like my dad. That's what I wanted to do, be a builder. And then uh, when I actually, um, I, I always had music in my in my veins, do you know what I mean? But it was, I never thought I'd do it as a career. So it wasn't in the family? It wasn't. Uh, well, <laughs> weirdly enough, it wasn't in in growing up. I would never have known this. But what happened was um, after I started DJing um, for about after about two years, my auntie Breda said to me, um, "Oh, it was only it was only um, right you'd go into music because your mum and dad were in music." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And he she went, "Your mum was a singer, and your dad was a drummer." And I was like, "What?" Like I've known my mum and dad for eighteen years at this time, twenty years or whatever. I well, never, I never it, said never it. never ever mentioned it at all. So I went and spoke to them both and. Like they Did you have to sit down like heart to heart with cup teas and listen, guys? I want to. <laughs> I need to talk to you about the topic. <laughs> yeah. No, I just sort of said to them like I didn't know. I said to my dad, I didn't know he was a drummer. And he went, Oh, it's just a bit of fun. And I was like, But that, you know, it's not, never ever did did I ever hear him walking around even drumming. Doo -doo -doo -doo, nothing. It was just it was didn't even enter my mind. And then my mum like she never mentioned she was a singer, but she was actually a really good singer. Really? So yeah, so it was quite weird. So that it was yeah, so unintentionally I went into into music and that. But um but yeah, so just going back to the hip hop thing. Yeah. I love hip hop mm. and I loved hip hop. Mm. But the thing is, is I never... I remember going to a Public Enemy concert in 1986 oh, at Hammersmith yeah, Odeon. We hear a lot of stories so about that. The 1st of November. I got mugged there, you know. Brav, you weren't the first one to say yeah, it on the podcast so, yeah. as well. So I, I, what happened, I remember, it was funny because... Um, uh, I was with all my mates and like we were all in the top thing and we, oh, we were 16, yeah? Yeah, so it was yeah. the 1st of November 1986, so it was 16 and um, it was like um, 
Public Enemy was on, and then after Public... No, it was, sorry, it was Eric B and Rakim was first. And then when the lights went down for Eric B and Rakim for the halftime show, we just got, like, jumped. And I remember I had a broken arm at the time. And the weirdest thing is, I literally had a bus pass. Back then, there was a Red Bus Rover. It's like a bus pass, <laughs> 65p, and that would just get you the bus to mm -hmm. Hammersmith. And then uh, I remember I had two uh, a £5 note down my cast, mm -hmm. and then I had 8p in my pocket. Anyway, they... they Emptied my pocket. They took the 8p. Give me back my bus pass. Fair play to them. Big up, lads. Give me back my bus pass so I could get home. And then, uh, yeah, so then what happened was, like, I was just thought, oh, well, whatever. I just got on with it. And then the weirdest thing is it happened again during the next interval. And I was like, bro, I've already been done. Like, what's the matter? You know, I went, all right, cool. So, um, oh, God, that fucking sucks. Yeah, no, do you know what? No, but check this out. So um, I was like, Chelsea, like, I don't know if anyone, anyone that knows me knows I hate Arsenal with a passion. I can't stand them. So anyway, <laughs> I found out there was a guy there and he went, he told them, he went, oh, you lot, you know, go and do one. So I said to him, I said, nice one, man. I said, look, I've, I've already been robbed early. I mm. said, they only took eight pence, but it's still, it's just the, the thought of it. You know yeah. what I mean? But I was just so focused on the concert, I didn't give a shit. Anyway, they were from North London. They were from Arsenal. So Chelsea were playing Arsenal two days later on the 3rd of November. Mm -hmm. Of course, I went over to North London and got on <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> Don't worry. We, we evened it up. But anyway, it's all good. But um, yeah, but the thing is, is, um, is yeah, hip hop, I loved hip hop because I think it was quite rebellious. It was a yeah. rebellious music, but so was electro. It was quite rebellious. Yeah. And like you, you either had the, the, the pop that was being forced down your throat mm. or just pirate radio. It was I either suppose. that it was that black and white, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. It literally was. And what I loved about uh, definitely from West London, I mean you're from West London as well, but what what the great thing about living in West London is how multicultural it yeah, is. I mean, true. when I came in, the first thing I said is, Do you have Irish background? Yeah. And you know, what it is is like I remember going to school and like, you know, my best mate was like uh, Paul Alawadi is uh, from Jamaican background, and then Paul Shagamutu is from Indian background, um Thomas Bogdanovich, mm -hmm. I hope it's okay to mention their names, yeah. Polish, and then Joel Woodley was English, and then yeah. Luciana yeah. Botti Italian. So to me, it was just this big melting pot. Of like my school was quite like that. It was like just everybody. But I look, I just see people as like you're either a nice person or you're not. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I think we're lucky over in West London that it's it's very much it, so. It, it's so it's so multicultural and and it's great because don't forget a lot of people. You know, as I say, there's a lot of communities here. You mentioned there's Portuguese mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like so many communities here and they all just like merge together and yeah, become it. one. And uh, I think that was, um, that's why I, it's funny you said, because I never knew about what you said about hip hop come out of here. But that kind of explain. I kind of see that because mm -hmm. even if you think about going to Jungle, right? Jungle was like a big mesh pot mm -hmm. of like... Reggae, hip hop, like jazz, rare groove, yeah. soul. It was everything the all chucked bang. into one, everything. And I think that really pulled like so mm. many people back together. And the reason that I got even got into the rave scene was I remember um, there was, I remember going to a rave in my mate um, D uh, Donald was like, Oh, you, we've just been to this acid house thing. You've got to come next week. So I was like, All right, cool, we'll go. <laughs> and I remember going in there and I just remember seeing everybody from all different cultures together under one roof mm -hmm. and there was no problem. And you know what? The way I felt at the time was it was more grimier on the street than it was here in the rave. In the rave, everybody was together as one. Didn't yeah. matter who you were, whether you're fat, skinny, whatever, tall, short, whatever you were, whatever nationality you were from, you're all together as one. So and it was that that made me go, this is me. Mm. I love this. And that was the thing that captured me. And that's what I think... You know, there was the whole peace, love and unity mm. thing. Like, really, really was, yeah. You know, I suppose it was a spin-off of, like, what happened in the 60s, I suppose, in the terms yeah. of um, that uh, flower power thing. The, and, and, more... and then this whole kind of criminal justice bill that came in. Oh, yes, it, yeah, It really yeah. was against the, the love that was being yeah. uh, put, put across. And, like you say, hip-hop for its time, the attitude, mm. it was going down a whole different path. Mm. The original path there was was all about positive energy yeah. and having fun, yeah. but then that kind of dispersed. Yeah. And then you, then what came of that was the the, yeah. the, the, the inception of, of Ray, the yeah. rave era, wasn't yeah. it? I, I remember um, when I first got into like the whole acid house rave era, I remember mm. people from my area going like, oh, you're into that devil music. And 
I was like, well, it's not devil music. It's like actually quite peaceful. Also, and there quite was a living. risk element. People did feel threatened by it. Yeah, I suppose. I never really thought about it back then. I just remember saying, oh, don't worry, you'll be you'll be in soon. And yeah. a year later, I'm walking through a warehouse and see them all mangled in the corner, like their jaw <laughs> swinging. And I'd be like, ah, you caught it now. You're in. You're right there. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, all right. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's wicked, isn't it? Like, so, you know, the beautiful thing about it, it was, it was like, um, it was... You know, the music from the start was the thing. It just, I think it just pulled everyone together. And I don't think, to, for, for, I forgot about that criminal justice bill. Um, that would have been um, when they started the whole freedom to dance mm. uh, thing. Because I remember there was a big protest at Trafalgar Square over it, mm. where they were trying to shut down basically people's rights to, yeah. you know, be free. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, we're, we're going through it all now. I don't want to get political, but it's. Um, it's quite funny. Uh, it's like a 30 year cycle. And someone actually mentioned cycle. to me the other day about it 30 years. So when I think about what's going on now, yeah, exactly they're exactly. trying to suppress us by feeding us crap news yeah, yeah. that is detracting us from the fact that our energy bills are through the roof. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. understand what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, the how cost we live living. in these environments from the yeah. fucking clue. I often think about it, man. I'm like, yo, how are artists are us? Mm. I mean, there's some people, there's many people that, uh, are living through the hardest of times, but mm. from a creative standpoint, can you imagine being 25, 26 now, trying yeah. to get a foothold? I said that to, I said to my missus yesterday, I feel sorry for our kids because it's so difficult to um, just, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, yeah. it was kind of hard when we were growing up because we never had what we yeah. have now, you know, like we, basically we, we had the newspapers telling us what yeah. to do or we had the TV telling us what to do and we yeah. only had three or four channels back yeah. then now you've got 600 million yeah, channels yeah podcasts and all this that's all this what I'm technology saying. all, all like, this, all yeah. this. But it, but this is great because yeah. what it is is people yeah. can go and find out their own truth their their, their truth and mm. what they believe in and follow their path which I think is brilliant mm. but at the same time it's like it's just so difficult I mean you know nobody can get anywhere to live at the moment it's right. just mad it's mad it's actually madness so mm. i don't want to i don't want to go on a gloomy one because like you know the the thing is is you've got to remain positive yeah. at all time you'll always be able to work it out and and get yourself out the other end and just remain positive man because yeah. you know that that's i really do believe in that you know uh, it's like anything if you wake up in the morning you kick your foot and you go oh you know, you mash your toe and the next thing you know, you get a text and it's like, sorry, got to cancel this. And you're like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah, then yeah, what yeah. it is, when you get in that mindset, do, 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 the rest of the day. It's hard to, yeah. So yeah. what you do is you just go, hold on. Shh, that's right, it. That's too bad. No problems. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I've got, I got time to do other stuff and then the day will change. And it's so weird. I remember someone saying that to me years ago and I was like, all right, mate, shut up. You know what mm. I mean? And I tried it and I went, oh my God, it actually it works. works. So, yeah. you know, you've got to keep, keep a positive mindset and uh, you'll, you'll, even when you're thinking, how am I going to get around this? How am I going to... You'll get around it. Figure just it out. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Because life is bigger than the, the, yeah. the sum of the parts that you yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. Do you think that's part of the course? Do you think that... Uh, and, and then without getting too much into classes and stuff and, you know, who's grinding and who's not, I mean, there's obviously a, a correlation between fucking going for it mm. as hard as you can because you know there's no, you know, there's no bungee cord here. Yeah. Um, I think when we were growing up, um, we were told the world is your oyster, you've got to work for it. Mm. When my kids are growing up, they were told the world is your oyster, it's you just go and take it. And I think that was the message was different because mm. what it is, is even though me and my wife have um, installed into our kids that you've got to work to, you've got to work. But um, if we never installed that, they would, they could have the mindset of is like, oh, well, it's mine for the taking. And I think mm. like the, the message changed. We were always told, you know, I remember everyone's got a story of this when uh, they were younger and a teacher was like, you're going to amount to nothing. And then, you know, two years, three years after leaving school, you're earning more than your teacher. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. we all have them stories. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, is again, the, the message, the message was, um, was we got to work for it um, rather than, um, then it's asked for the taking. And mm. I think that's a key thing there. Hasn't that because, changed, isn't it? Yeah, it has changed massively. And I only know this because my kids are at school and, and they would, you know, I'd be, they'd be talking to me about things and I'd be like, what do you mean? Like, do you know what my daughter said to me? I always say this, I, like I've got to big her up. This, when she was eight years old, she was like, dad, I want to I wanna start a YouTube channel and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I was just like, no, stop being stupid. Like, you know, you've got to think about a real career mm. anyway. Um, it's so weird because she put up a video. I, put, I remember I put a music video out at the time and I had about 
mm, 8,000 or something on the views mm-hmm. on it. And I was like, okay, that's cool. My daughter done a video, no lie. And it's like, what's in my school bag? And she had 35,000 views on her what's in my school bag video. So my daughter, who was eight years old, had more Yo. views on her video than I did. Wow. And I was like, wow. And it was only a few, <laughs> it's only, sometimes things happen and you realise years later when you look back and go, wow. And I always, I should have, what I, what what we do as parents is, we think because we're older than our children, we know more. Mm. But what after I realised I made a mistake, if my kids go to me, Dad, there's this thing called TikTok, I'm like, really? Show me how to mm-hmm, use it, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Because they know what's going on. That yeah. I ain't got time to be sitting there going, what's the latest trend? Yeah, 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 yeah. And remember, the latest trend is to follow the trend. Did you know that? You don't set a trend, you have to follow the trend. Yeah. So that's it. There's the, latest the real trend. talk right yeah. there. Don't set the trend, follow it. Yeah. And there you go. So this is where the time, you know, back in the, I remember we did a podcast, me, Harry, and uh, Shabs Big Up, lads. Yeah, come on, guys. And, um, and, Dons. and um, we did a podcast, Originality, Does Anyone Care? Mm. So, like, um, not really, don't give a shit, yeah. really. They don't care. They just want to be entertained and they yeah. want, and that was a real eye opener because like, I always think to myself, yeah, I want to do this and I want to be the first. Don't matter, man. Just mm. if you like to do something, you know, we weren't like SASS weren't mm. the first to do a podcast, but when we do our podcast, we try to make it in our own way, entertaining mm. in our own way, and I put our own twist on it. We've got the three different right. angles, yeah. and you know, Shotter's knowledge on on everything is just mad. His knowledge and <sighs> Shabs has got yeah. stories for days. Do you yeah, understand yeah. what I mean? And it's I've kind of fallen into the role of, of the anchor man of the show. It's yeah, quite yeah, funny, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what we as did? DJs do, of course. Well, you know, the maddest thing is what we did was uh, I said to the boys, "Look, let's swap seats for." You know, an episode. So I sat there and Shabba sat here and Harry here. Then we did another one where Harry was there <laughs> and I was here. And um, when we went back to our original placing, um, the amount of comments we had from people going, um, oh, great, you're back in your normal places. It feels better now. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it's funny how we get... Because I, when I come here, I was actually thinking to myself, I'm going to ask you if I can sit that side because I think Freak my left my left side is my better side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, that all stems from when I was younger. I got an earring. And I remember I was seven years old and I got this earring, right? And I went swimming that day. So I used to hang around in uh, Fulham like with my cousins mm-hmm. and that. And I remember we went to um, we went to the swimming pool, Fulham Swimming Baths. And I remember swimming and right there's all these girls at the end of the thing. And so I swam like that. So I swam <laughs> with the earring, with the earring leading, thinking that the earring was going to seal the deal. It didn't. It didn't work, by the way. So I went through all that pain for nothing. But you know, Crippling my neck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's so funny. So ever since then, I've always had this idea that my left side is my best side. But if we, it is that, technically by the way because uh, uh, blood flows to the left hand side. Oh, is it? Mm. There you go, I never knew uh, that. Can we swap? Fact, Can we swap and like throw people out? <laughs> <laughs> right, throw them out. You yeah, cut, cut, straight, yeah. straight. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, we'll is throw them. if we did that, and mm. I didn't think about it till now, I just said it, if we did that, your people would have watched them, would have been like, that, that, it didn't look, it wouldn't yeah, have looked right. Does 100%. that make sense? How mad is that? They just, it's, it's, the human mind is fucking bonkers, yeah, isn't it? It's mad. How it's it mad. works like I that. I know, that. it's crazy. It's, you and you think. You to see in something in a certain way. Yeah, you know and if, if, if there's a slight change as well, it's like, public no yeah they use yeah. clock it and yeah they, they do but uh, do you know what sorry I, I am a bit of a i can veer off what was we was talking about saying and I've, i wanted to get my point and i've just gone blah, 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 around well, the corner. well i think i think it was mildly covered from this from mildly covered from the sense that you've got to you've got to let the future the youngsters Create. Oh, I know. It's a yes. Yeah. I know you're talking. So basically, like the the thing is, is stemming from the work, the class of it yeah, all, and, and yeah, getting I, through. See, see, I think, um, I think that, you know, like with, uh, I just think you're you're. For me, let just tell you exact what happened was, um, I was going out and I was DJing and I was getting like x amount of pounds. It wasn't it wasn't a lot, and um, I remember DJing for an hour and everyone was like, oh. Oh my god it's amazing yeah and then i'd go to work for my dad and my uncle for a week and i'd get less money for 40 hours a week and all i'd get is can you do that can you do that do that oh did you do did you not do that and and like, what it was is i was just like wow wait a minute i'm going out on a saturday and i'm playing to like two thousand people and they're going mad they're loving it and then i'm coming to work on a monday and like i'm getting kind of told can you pick that up, put that yeah. there? Can you hang that door? Can you do this? And I was like, and I'm getting less money. Yeah. Kind of didn't yeah. add up to me. So I thought to myself, right, I've got to try and make this music thing work. Because as I say, I never, I didn't know I wanted to do music. Uh, it was it was only when I found the rave scene and um, 
I remember again my auntie Breda, like I was with her in Fulham and we were we were uh, car- I was carrying her shopping, and then I remember walking past this shop on the King's Road and it was going, doof, 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 and I was like, huh? And I went and I just put my head in. And I went, uh, I said, oh mate, I said, uh, this is the music I listened to on the weekend. What do you sell it? And they went, yeah. I went back in five minutes and I quickly walked her around to the to the house and I went, Breda, I'll see you later. So I went back to the record shop. I walked in there. I remember it was their vinyl zone in Kings Road. So fucking Kings Road, right in the heart of Chelsea yeah. stomping ground. Yeah, yeah. So dun, this, dun, this, dun, was, dun. Well, this was the Fuller Men. So it'd be okay. right on the other end, not the, the Chelsea. I was right. on the Fuller Men. Okay. Anyway, when when um when I went in there, like I remember the geezer must have sort of seen me coming because he stacked my pile like this of loads of crap, but I didn't care. I couldn't believe it. you yeah, actually yeah. could physically hold this the thing vinyl. That you heard, yeah. That I was listening to this at the weekend. So it was then, um, I went, I said to my cousin. How old have you been there? Huh? How old would you have been? I would have been uh, 18 then. Wow. Yeah, I would have been 18. Very impressive. Yeah, so, so what happened was uh, I went back to my, my cousin, Nicky. He was a big reggae fan. He's a bit older than me, massive reggae fan. And um, I went to his and he had a deck. And so I put the records on the deck and then I said to my cousin, Eamon, he's his brother. I said, he's like, he's like one of my best mates. He's like, it's ever since we, he's, I'm three months old and then we've been grown up, you know what I mean? Lovely. And he, um, he, I went to him, Eamon, like, we, we need to go and get another deck so we can get two decks. So anyway, he, there was not, they, they were in belt drive. They weren't the mm-hmm. proper deck. So anyway, we went to Tandy and we bought this deck. So we come back and we had these two decks and we're like, right, um, okay, so how do we go from that record to that record? Oh, God, oh that's good. We need a mixer. Mm. Oh, so we Fuck. back down to Tandy, bought a mixer. Really? <laughs> I didn't even know. So I went and bought a mixer. And then I remember I was going, I can't get, I, can't, I couldn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying to get him inside. So this is what I'm saying. I was 18. I didn't have a clue. Yeah. Like, so, and I was just like, okay, cool. But one wow. thing about me is when I'm, when I want to do something, I'm determined I go do it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like, I decided like I was going to raves and then I, like I was doing, I was doing things like, um, handing out flyers just to get a queue jump. I remember there's this rave at Slough Centre, this guy, Stuart, he used to have a bowler hat. He was a bit of a celeb um, in, uh, back in the day. Mm-hmm. And I remember I went to Slough Centre, such sick raves there. And um, and I said to him, look, I'm going to uh, Land of Oz and Rage at Heaven. At the, so Land of Oz was Monday and uh, Rage was on a Thursday. I said, mm-hmm. let me take Heaven's some... Heaven's a legendary spot. Yeah, legendary. legendary. venue. So I... I uh, do you know Harry's never been there? I actually spoke to him the other day about it because we did a podcast on no clubs way. in London and we've got one coming out. Well, by the time this come out, it'll be last that week. That surprises me. Yeah, so we've we done a... And we've done wow. a thing and he never... He's never been to Heaven and I was like, bro, it's Harry. one of the best venues. Harry, my brother. Yeah, it's, it's such a sick venue. Yeah, really but, um, but what happened was I said to the guy, Stuart, I said, Stuart... Um, I'll take some flyers for you. Mm. And he was like, all right, cool. So I took flyers and at the end of the rave, I was handing them out as people were coming out. And then there was this guy called Jarvis in front of me Mm -hmm. who run biology. And Jarvis turned around to me and went, "Uh, you got any VIPs? And I was like, what the... (laughs) I didn't even know what VIPs were. I was like, what the... A VIPs. And I went, "Uh, no, no, no. Have you got any VIPs for that? And he went, yeah, yeah. Come and see me tomorrow at um, Vinyl Zone in Kings Road. And I was like, that's my record shop. I went, all right, cool. I'll see you there. So I went, he said, bring a photo. I went down there the next day. So as, as, as true to his word, he, um, he went to me, um, yeah, cool, bam. He, um, I gave him my photo. He went out the back, come back with biology cards. I had my own VIP backstage card, pass and everything. So I said to him, look, give me some flyers. I'm going to yeah. be, a, I'm doing this. Uh, sat the, the, you see what I was doing last night. I said, I'm doing that. I'll do yours on Thursday at Rage as well. And then I, back in them days, we was going out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every day. So I said, I'll do it. So anyway, as I'm doing the flyers, I only did the flyers just so I could get a queue jump. I still would pay to get in. Mm. So I remember going back to Slough and then um, there was this queue going around the block and then Stuart would be walking along the queue and he'd see me and he'd be like, ah, Steve, who are you with? And I'm like, oh, I'm with these lot. And they'd be like, like, come on, and just pull us right to the front. We still pay our 20 quid to get in. We didn't want to get in for free. Well, didn't even know you could get in for free. I just paid the 20 quid. All my mate thought I was a, like, you thought, well, what a legend. The queue was two hours long and everyone was in. We was in early. And See, that's then, gold dust in itself to yeah, get a jump like that. But that's what I'm saying, just a queue jump. That was like a big thing back then, do you know what I mean? And uh, I know back in the day, you used to have like, uh, I remember uh, the club in Burlington Street. You must have known, it's a big hip hop club as well. Um, there was a club in Burlington Street. It was really plush. They used to do, oh, I can't think of the name of it now, but they, they used to do this thing and it was really hard to get in. The guy would literally go along and if you 
if he thought you were ugly, you ain't getting in. Really? If it was that deep. Or Comment were, below if you know the venue. If, if you, you were, know the venue. Yeah, if you, if you, even if you were dressed bad, you weren't getting in. He'd be like, not them shoes? Nah, sorry. And it was like, so really? when you'd come along, you were a bit like that. And I happened to like recognise him as a face in the scene. So we'd be standing in the queue and I'd be like, oh, everyone would be calling his name. And I'd be like, yo, and he'd be like, oh. Yeah, yeah, come. Uh, so, like, me and my little crew, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, we just yeah, bolted yeah, the yeah. front and we're just like, oh, In yeah. the pocket. <laughs> totally, you become the man about town, the face around. Well, you, you? You, that's what you did. It was like that. You just become a bit of a, like, known, like, I suppose, like, someone they, they're not trust in the sense of, like, yeah. can you hold that for me? But but the thing is, is you become, like, known with the community. That was it. It was it's a really great community. interesting that you went in through that way through the race. Like, um, for the UK hip-hop scene you'd have the record stores which would be the main place of mm. interaction and then you'd hear about the clubs, you'd get there and you'd be seen. Yeah. But you, you didn't, the other way around almost, yeah. it was like, yeah. okay, you, you had the records but you didn't know anybody in the yeah. record store so you yeah. got to know people in the club land yeah. first. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I didn't really look at it like that but that was it. Um, like the thing is, is, as I say, when I first started going raving, I just was like, I can't believe I'm in these it felt like a bit of a secret club, a secret society. Yeah. It felt like special, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, you were in the know. And I remember I used to love going back and telling everyone about it. Like, yeah, you know, like there's this thing called Acid House. You lot need to get into it. And yeah, as I say, people were like, oh, that's devil music. Or they weren't in it. And then yeah. two years later, you see them there loving yeah. it. So they, they got it in the end. And and the amount of people that go, oh, you've been doing this for time. And I was like, yeah. So I felt, you felt a little bit like, yeah, you know, I was on it. I was on it from early. To, but to, to feel like you were on the crest of something so... Yeah, special. Yeah, it was mad. <sighs> it was, it was a special time. So, so then what happened was um, from, from my links as um, with these people, what I started doing is I started selling tickets for raves. So when you start selling tickets for one, then what happens is they'll the others will contact you and like me and my mum were running a ticket uh, place uh, when my mum's old house in Ealing, and like we used to it used to be on the flyer Steve from Ealing. My phone would be popping off and I would be earning so much money because we'd, we'd get about five pound a ticket. That's what you'd get about five or a ticket, which in those days was a well, sizable amount. Sell a thousand tickets. It's yeah. five grand. Yeah, so my yeah, mum, my, my mum was like, because I wasn't in all the time, my mum would be running and my mum was shrewd, you know, I mean, she's still shrewd to this day. But um, she'd be like, you know, and, and I, it's so funny, I, I go out to raves and people would be going, I met your mum. And I'd be like, oh God, <laughs> well, thinking, what happened? And she'd be like, no, no, she sorted us out, like four tickets. There was none left and she managed to get us some. And I was like, oh, I don't know how she bloody got them. But oh, Steve she got, Mealing. So you yeah, that, man. Yeah, so, but. Um, Is that widely known outside the, the book, you, you know? The, uh, I think it's in the book I do really? talk about I think I talk about it in the book because it was a big part of like how I got Huge. embedded in this music and then from that I um I basically I, I remember I did, and this this is actually a story and this is actually where I got my name fantasy from so what happened was um I was uh me and my mate Wurzel there was a rave called fantasy at Rygate it was September the 30th 1989 and um, what happened is the guys that run it, um, Dave, who weirdly enough got, got in contact with me about two years ago. I hadn't spoken to him for years. Big up, he, Dave. Hold tight, yeah, Dave. Yeah, big up, Dave, man. And uh, and he he got hold of me. Um, you know, he's he's about and it's lovely to hear from him. But anyway, what happened was um, that day, um, we um, look, they said to me, look, do you mind go to Box Hill and basically do the tickets for us? So I said, all right, cool. So they gave me two security guards and two dogs and my mate Wurzel. So what I did is, as we got that's a there... Lot, that's a lot for, for that kind of job. Well, yeah, well, I didn't think about it at the time, but you'll, you'll probably understand why in a minute. I didn't really think about it, but, but I, all I was told was, here's some tickets, go and sell them. That's it. There's a meeting point, sell the tickets. So as the meeting point, people were coming in, I was going, you got tickets? And the first lot of people were like, no, 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 buying tickets to me. So I think they were like 25, 30 <laughs> quid or whatever. I was selling the tickets. So I, what, what, it, what it was, was there one security guard stayed wherever and then I had one just sort of loitering around as I was um, doing it with his dog and then um, so I was selling all the tickets and then what happened was after about an hour the car park was rammed like rammed and like I know I looked and I went I haven't sold that many tickets like I sold you know I've sold probably I don't know 50 or 100 I hadn't sold I had a stack like this anyway mm. so I said to the security remember I'm 18 years old mm. I don't you know I wasn't I, when I think about it now, I think to myself, it's my business brain kicking in. Mm. It's not my business. It's just a business brain kicking in. But what happened? Yeah, so what happened was um, they, they, they said to me, um, I said, right, I was going around, you got tickets? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, show them. And they're like, no. And I was like, all right, cool. So I said to security, I called them over. I went, right, listen, 
what you're going to do is you're going to take the car and you're going to drive it out so and you're going to slowly go along and you stay with me with the dog and Wurzel, you're that side and I'm that side of the, the windows of the cars. And basically anyone don't have a ticket, then the, the convoy ain't going nowhere. So we were the only people that knew where the rave was, right? So apart from the other meeting point. People. So remember, when you're 18 years old and you have this information, you feel kind of special Empowered, because, yeah. because, you know, you have this. But I never abuse my power. Mm. But what it is is... If you sent me to do a job, I'm going to do the job the best I can for you. Mm. Because if I do a good job, guess what? You're going to ask me to do it again. That's right. right? We build a relationship, yeah? Honor. So anyway, every car come out, I made I said, show me your tickets. No. I said, well, the car, the convoy ain't going nowhere. Show me your tickets. So no, okay, cool. £30 each. Sold. The cars were all packed. Anyway, sold all the tickets, right? The car, there was hundreds of cars. Oh. It was ridiculous. So, um, so anyway, basically we had this convoy driving with us and we got caught at lights and I was going to the driver, drive around, don't miss anyone. So we're driving the whole convoy around this massive like <laughs> one way system to wait for people. And you see people, we're like, follow us out the window, follow us. Yeah, so yeah. we didn't want to lose anyone. I just sold yeah. them all the tickets. I want to make sure they get yeah, in, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway. Pipe, pipe is shit. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Pipe, pipe, I love that. Wicked. Okay, cool. So anyway, we get there. When we get there, the police have blocked it all off, right? So what's happened? There's actually a famous video. If you search online uh, Fantasy Reggae um, on YouTube, 1989, you'll see the video where Chalky White, uh, the legend, the legendary Chalky White, he's actually standing there arguing with the police about letting the rave go on and the security overturned the police car because the police were trying to shut the rave oh, down. I've it was seen like, this. I've it seen was this like proper, It was proper peak. So anyway, as I got there... There's all this is going on and I've got like, I'm talking hundreds of cars just all lined up. Yeah. And so I run along the road going, pull up, pull up. I was going to everyone, pull up. I'm getting goosebumps now. Yeah. I was going, pull up, pull up. And I was making everyone pull up on the sideway of the thing, of the, the this country lane. Mm. Pull over, pull mm. over just to, you know. And then so I was going, get out. And I was going to everyone, get out, get out. We're going to run across the field. So next thing you know, I'm running across a field because the old bill are up there blocking everyone. I'm yeah. like, everyone fucking over the hedge. Excuse me, I was so scared. Yeah, no, no, it's like, um, don't know, carry yeah, on. Yeah, and uh, everyone's over the hedge. So I'm running through this field with hundreds of ravers and we can see the lights and I'm like, this way, this way. As I'm running, it dawned on me that I've got about 10 grand in my pocket in cash and any time any one of these could go, oi, I want my money, bam, and that, they could have took it. You yeah. know what I mean? But it, it didn't enter my mind until I'm halfway through the field of all these. The security uh, have gone to join the other security. Yeah. Anyway, got into the rave, got everybody in. So thankfully all, all my lot got in. Yeah. Respect, guys. And um, then I went, to, I went to, I found a porter cabin where the promoters were. And I walked in and I was like, went, listen, guys, I need to give you this money. Like, and they went, no, 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 see, see us Monday, see us Monday. And I went... No, no, no. You need to yeah. take this money now, like, right? yeah. because like, I've just like um, I've just um, run through a field. Anyway, yeah. I pulled out my pockets, put about ten grand. The money was like this, and they, the the guy sat back and he went, "Where'd you get all this from?" And I went, "I've just sold all them tickets." And he went like, "What?" And he turned around, and he went, Ch -ch -ch -ch, and he went like that, and he handed me a grand, and I went, "I don't want it. I want to play." And he went, take the grand and you're playing. And I went, sweet. Oh my so God, that, that was so that was sick. the moment. That was the moment that I thought. So anyway. I'm waiting to go on. This is about two in the morning. I'm waiting to go on. And then obviously Fabio comes along. Fabio's Fabio, yeah. the legend. Yeah. So obviously, I've got, okay, fabs. I'm on after fabs. No mm. problems. Then Frankie Valentine comes. Frankie Valentine's a legend. Oh, tight. I've got to let Frankie on. So what's happening is as I'm waiting to go on, like I'm sitting there all night. All my mates are off getting mash up. I'm sitting there all night waiting. And uh, all these bigger artists are coming in. Or I wasn't even an artist at the time. Mm. But, you know, all these bigger guys were coming in uh, that were well established. Bones, Tony Bones. He's from round here, by the way. Tony really? Bones, yeah. From round here. He was oh, sick. I actually, I, I don't even know if his first name was Tony. I've, I think I called him Tony, but his DJ Bones was his name. Oh, but he was so sick. He had this bowler hat and he was just finesse with the mm. DJ, man. He was so sick. So anyway, all these guys were playing at this big, like, um, Ray Fantasy in the... It had a, like, it was in a bowl thing, yeah? Anyway, eventually I get to go on. Steve Jackson's on before me from Kiss FM. You know the legendary <laughs> Steve Jackson. So big up Steve, yeah? So anyway... Google these names, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Google these names. So Steve Jackson goes to me, are you on next? And I'm like, I'm, don't forget, I'm sitting here now. It's like seven in the morning. I've been sitting there since two. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, five, six hours. And I'm like, yeah. And he went, what's your DJ name? I went, I didn't have one. And I went, uh, Steve? Because, and he went like this, I'll never forget, he went, coming up next is, because his name was Steve Jackson. So there was no reason for him to say Steve about me. Yeah. yeah so he just went, anyway, I went on and I'll never forget it. As I was on playing, 
they were dismantling the stage while I'm DJing. And I remember Mickey Finn was in the crowd and Mickey Finn's going like this. And I was like looking at this mixer and I was like, Pfft. and he, he come along, Mickey come along and actually sorted the, the EQ out for me because it was obviously like rinsing, you know yeah. what I mean? Anyway, big up Mickey, Mickey Finn, wow. yeah, the legend. So anyway, I played the set, like it was amazing. I, 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 you yeah. remember it? You remember it all? Oh, I remember it. I, I remember, I just it was, remember. It was still packed, even though they were Yeah, it was still busy. Yeah, it was at seven in the morning. People were going nowhere. They was there. I mean, it wasn't as packed as it was at two, but it was still very busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I remember afterwards, I went round to meet the guys from Fantasy, the Rave Fantasy. That's what the Rave was called. And um, it was on the Wednesday, and they all had all been arrested. And they were told they were not allowed to do any more events under that name. So I said to them, look, do you mind if I use the name Fantasy? because it's special to me with the event and uh and isn't it my first big event i played at and uh and then um, they went yeah as long as you put dj in front of it so that's where dj fantasy was born that's how i come up with my name an ode an ode <laughs> that's mad, isn't it? to the, it, the, the it's, moment it's mad to actually have like a na- like uh, a story behind the name rather than going oh yeah my name my surname is fantasy yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah, i know yeah. just fantasy <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so is there's actually Stevano a, fan- yeah <laughs> Stevano fantasy <Fantasellos. laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so that was the the story behind that but it was, again, it was, you know, I, I, I've often said this. If we were picking names today, I would never pick fantasy. But back then, fantasy was, like, in, t- mm. in, in tune with what was going on. We were, we were all in this, like, love and fantasy world. And but like, I, feel like, I feel like, as a name, it sends you directly to source. Yeah. Like, that's, a good, that's a good point, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's what, it, it's, it, the roots lie in terminology like fantasy of fantasia yeah you know what i mean dreamscape yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean like yeah. these these were fundamentals yeah. within our upbringing yeah. so so when i think of fantasy you know it's 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 yeah it's it's a, a it's the, of that time tip, yeah 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 so it is it's like it's yeah it's kind of, if you think about harry shotter he he got his name obviously he was lethal before but mm. he got his name and at the time harry potter was like it, yeah, massive but, uh, yeah. so he done a play on that harry yeah. shot i thought that was brilliant absolutely absolutely and you know if you look at shabs shabs has got his his reason why he's got his name, mm-hmm. you know, going back for he was called it at school, and that's right. and that's you know because he used to go back uh, visit Jamaica and that. So, you know, th- he's got a whole story. Again, all of this is on mm. our SAS documentary. Yeah, and at this point, again, big up the lads, you know, Shabba, yeah. uh, yeah, Barry, Peace, Gibbardy, yeah, of course, of course um, man, Harry, like Storming, as well. Storming. My goodness, I mean, we'll get into some SAS in a bit, yeah. but um, from raves into dr- well. That then morphed into jungle, the Room yeah. Two era, the yeah. era of uh, breakbeats and bass yeah. lines. See, for me, like w- what it is, a lot of people don't realise this, but jungle came around l- like two, maybe three years before jungle became a thing. Mm-hmm. So there was a thing called jungle techno, which was basically. So we had like rave, like so we had acid house. Then acid house turned into like um, house, mm-hmm. and then um, from house become euro. So it's a little bit more harder. Jerry Beltram. <laughs> then after yeah. that, people were putting breaks in. Like so, there was people like Frankie Bones, um, uh, Frankie, no, not Frankie Knuckles, Frankie Bones, Todd Terry. Mm-hmm. They were doing these yes. things. They were doing these things with like four to the floor, but with breaks in it. Yeah. And then what happened was that was kind of being coined as jungle techno. And then, like, so what it is, had a techno influence, but, like, breakbeats. And do you know the first person I ever heard say the word jungle, God rest his soul, a really good friend of mine, he passed away, like, not not so long ago, oh, Jason K, Jason, who yes, was part of, of Top Buzz, absolute legend. Rest in peace, And a Jason massive, yeah. massive garage DJ as well. Yeah, um, pioneer. And all, yeah, all like, he, people don't realise how much he'd done for mm. the sound back in the day. You know, it's kind of understated, but... Um, but what happened was, I remember like we were he, we were at the Coventry Eclipse, and I remember the lineup was there: me, Top Buzz, Mickey Finn. I think Sasha was on. There was a few, but I remember me, Mickey, and Top Buzz were there, and then um, he was playing this song right, and it was there was no four to the floor in it. It was just breaks, and it was like. Ch-ch-ch-ch. And I remember turning around to Jay, and I was like, "What? What's this?" And he turned around, he pulled a spliff out of his mouth, and he went, "This is jungle, man," and I just was like, "Okay, cool, I'm hooked." Wow. You know what I mean? And the way because he he was like. He was just, it was so inspirational, you know what I mean? And then and then so he he like so at the time there was like Mickey Finn, um, Top Buzz and myself were like pushing this whole jungle techno mm-hmm. um sort of sound, that mm. jungle kind of early jungle yeah, vibe. Yeah, yeah. Then what happened was later on, um you, you had people come in and like proper take it to the 
to the next level where it was started becoming like proper jungle. Mm. And, you know, there, like, there's so many to name because I think for me, when jungle come, I think it really opened up everything to everything. it just it just pulled people from everywhere together genre. yeah just it was genre. just it was amazing it was well, an amazing MCs time could MC, and then then singers and you know the, oh man i mean just the influences like you said earlier about the uk allowing melting pots to come together mm. That's what Jungle did yeah. for people. Yeah, it did. It was a big melting pot. And, you know, um, it's funny because I did, a, in 1991, if you go back, it's actually on my Spotify, um, I have a, an EP I released in 1991 called The Jungle EP. And people would only know Jungle as 1994 onwards, really. Oh, wow. So look at that. I, I put an EP out called The Jungle There's EP. There's one for in, you. In, wow. In, in, uh, and I'll tell you another person who was massive on that was uh, Paul Ibiza. Okay. So Paul Ibiza, uh, do you, I don't know if you know Paul no, Ibiza. No. So Paul Ibiza is like was was mat, like he had Ibiza Records. They were mat, they were on the jungle thing from time. It was like hardcore jungle, if you know. Yeah, what I mean, it was yeah. that kind of it was that kind of merge between jungle techno jungle. It was the early birth of it, and then what happened was the the hardcore and the techno side got, got sort removed. of moved. Yeah. And then in come the sort of the culture, mm. you know, what we all grew up with, mm. like listening to hip hop, listening to like reggae and listening to like soul and jazz funk. Mm. And, and then it just went whoom, and it just blew like it just spread out like like wildfire. This came from I mean? the clubs, the exper experimenting. Then it gets served to the streets, mm. the everyday man, the the estates mm. the wider fields mm. you know where the illegal raves were until the criminal justice bill came and somehow they're coming through on tapes they're coming yeah, through yeah. on tape on packs were massive with scarcity yeah, but yeah. but once you had a pack you're like yeah. well, that's mine yeah, yeah get it duplicated around the class yeah, a million exactly, times exactly in school but but so so that feedback from the audience and i'm going in the direction of that rude boy era where You'd you'd have like, you know, uh, savoury people coming into mm. the clubs and but that just happens with anything that becomes Does that popular. Does happen with everything? Every, yeah, because hip hop, there was a time when hip hop never had that. It becomes so popular and it be you know, sort of like the darker element come out to it because yeah. everyone wants to be where it's at. Does that sell it? Um, what I think it does is it makes it a little bit edgy, which yeah. is people love a bit of edge. Yeah. But also what it does is those people that I mean. You know, those people that are maybe a bit anxious or a bit worried might sort of, oh, I'll give that one a miss. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, and all, I've always been a big believer in this. When the girls leave, you've got a problem. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, girl, you need girls, you yeah. need to keep the girls locked in because the girls will basically bring the guys. I remember and seeing Dance Energy in that and there was, uh, there used to be the news section. Was that section. the TV show? Mm. I, I was on that, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? That was filmed in, um, in Parsons Green. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Another veteran story, yeah. man. I remember, you know what? It's funny. It's quite cringy now, actually. My mum actually got me a cap made with my name on it. I remember it was a corduroy baseball cap and it had fantasy on it. And uh, I remember, oh, at the time, I thought, oh, thanks, mum. It's great. And I put it on like because I was going to be on the telly. You know what I mean? But when I think about it now, like, it's a bit cringy <laughs> to have your name on there. But yeah, um, yeah, Dance Energy. I remember that. Um, yeah, it was filmed in Parsons Green. It was like some studios around the back there. Huge advocates of like mm. new and progressive music. Yeah. Seeing Jungle for the first time on there, f littered with females. Mm. It was almost like the promised land. Yeah. It was like fucking oh, a drum and bass guy going, yeah. go to a hip hop club and it's like mostly men. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just think that is, um, you know, I just think it's, yeah, it is, like, again, it's just like anything, even like a few years ago, like drum and bass, um, mm. you know, before SASS like exploded onto the whole festival circuit, there was like, it was, you know, drum and bass was quite a lot of guys there, you know what yeah. I mean? It was quite a, a sausage fest in that way. And then what happened was when you start introducing like sort of songs that mm. the girls can sing along to, mm. they come out. And uh, we've got like right now. There's a very very healthy mix. Yeah, Do you know is. what I mean? It's, girls, it's brilliant. Yeah, oh, yeah, and the girls, brilliant. like no disrespect to the guys, but the girls, they really do help create an atmosphere. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, um, and I think that's why I think drum and bass from the outside in is looking like so healthy. But it, the one thing is, is I think that um, with with like music like hip hop, and this is talking from a non hip hop artist and a, just a, a more of a fan of the music. Yeah, I always felt that. 
um, we were always looking to America for inspiration, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, and what always. it is, is like there could be um, MCA and MCAA. Mm. And if one of them was from America, the world would take him more serious than if he was from England. Yeah. But the England guy could be 10 times better. Mm. But it was just the, the sort of the slang, the, the way mm. that they, they delivered the lyrics, yeah? Or the way they, they, they're swagging in their delivery. Yeah. But one thing about the rave scene, the jungle and everything was... That was born here in the UK, yeah. and we exported it yeah. like like UK Garage. There was Garage from America, but mm. UK Garage was was like Mikey B, Spoonie, all them guys. Sorry if I missed anyone, but yeah, yeah, all yeah. them guys that Jason K, all them guys that worked hard to help it become yeah. the big music of its time. Do you know? What I mean, I remember going out with them guys, and now that's where the girls were. Girls were yeah. you know, flocking there, and what happened when? But it was mad because everyone was just on a party vibe because if there's girls in the place no guy ain't looking to fight he's no. looking to try and check a girl right. so yeah. so what it is his concentration's here now rather than oh is that guy looking at me or whatever and um but i think the good thing about that kind of culture where rave um the, the sort of birth of hardcore and yeah. that jungle early jungle and jungle jungle techno da, 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 and uk garage even dubstep, all of these things were born here in the UK. So yeah. we didn't look and go, oh, that's rubbish because it's better coming from America. And I think the problem for hip hop is the Americans just had it so locked yeah, and yeah. they do it so well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's environmental as well. You, you're, you're sold on that environment, you're sold yeah. on the lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. And we don't have that, we, but yeah. we have other things. Yeah, but I, the thing is, is we've got some sick uh, British uh, hip hop artists oh. going from way back. But like, now they, now that, but that, but. I think that I think what comes into play is that um, Americanism is more global now yeah, than it ever was, yeah. thanks to the internet and whatnot. Yeah, but even, also even you've got like, our own sound as well. Yeah, even like my kids will call trousers and um, pants. No, not about that. Yeah, they do. They'll go really? like, yeah. So we go, no, no, no. It's their trousers. Yeah. Oh, and they'll be like, oh, sorry. Yeah. It's just because they talk to their American friends all the time and they really? talk about Pat. Yeah, it's mad. They, they've they actually got friends they've known for 10 years online. And like when they come to England, they all meet up. And when we went over to America, they met up with like, well, they didn't meet them all because they're all, America's a big place. But the people that were in the thing came wow. and met them for an afternoon. And it was, you know, see them. It's mad. Like, you know, and that's, you know, it, it's no world difference. It's getting smaller. It is getting smaller, man. It's, you know, it's getting smaller. But um, I think that's, for me, I think from outside looking into the hip hop world mm. is because everyone was looking at the, the US as the flagship, mm. it, it kind of really didn't help the British rappers. But what I love now, um, with the birth of Grime mm. um, and more recently Drill, yeah. like, some of the kids that are doing that are so sick. The, honestly, like I'm like, pfft. like I've been a massive supporter of MC culture mm. from going back. You really have, yeah. You know, um, there's not many. I remember DJs that that actually there's still DJs about mm. now that absolutely hate MCs, which mm. I don't get because to me the MC, even though I can MC for myself if I want to. Um, not spit bars, mm -hmm. talk to the crowd, put your hands yeah, in yeah, the air yeah. and wave them side to side and all that, just general stuff. But the thing is, is the, the MC, if, if you work together and you click like how me and the boys have clicked, mm. like we can, cr we've proved that you can create something unique and special that mm. everyone can enjoy. I mean, we've we've mm. we've gone to festivals where we're the only drum and bass act there, and the place is rammed yeah, yeah. where people want to see us, and like that's really humbling. That it's hard to do in a flooded yeah. in a flooded uh, yeah. uh, industry of yeah. you know or genre yeah. where it's so it's so regular mm. to see MCs at certain times of the night yeah. patterned with certain DJs, mm. etc. It's, it's part, it's, in, it's ingrained in the culture. Yeah. To identify SAS as such a a, 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 a level up, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it inspired a lot of other people as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the the thing is, is going back to back in the day, um, I, I remember um, Rat Pack were about, like mm, uh, the legendary Rat Pack. Pack. Yeah, Big Up Evo and Huge. Uh, Mark, absolute legends and lovely guys yeah, as well. Yeah, good and um, Northwest as well, hold tight. Are they Northwest? Yeah, Wembley way, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. I know they're over east now, so maybe, yeah. But anyway, but the Rat Pack, so what happened was there was them, and then who else was about uh, back in the day? There was somebody else about, I know the Ragga Twins were about, but I wasn't really in their circle at the time. Uh, they, they, I kind of yeah. more linked them when they was when we started doing the jungle, mm -hmm. but I'm going back to rave days. Yeah. And then you had Pat from Top Buzz, uh, Mad yep. P, MC Mad P. But 
Aside from that, there weren't really. There was Chalky White, who's local. He's a West Northwest London yep. guy. Yeah, we're actually West London, Labrick Grove. So, uh, big up Chalky. But it, there was a time when he'd be the only guy there on stage all night, and he he wasn't like spitting bars. He'd just be talking to people. He'd be like, "Oh, some MC Moose shit." You know, it's kind of. Uh, yeah, Moose 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 is actually not far from here either. He's a he's a Northwest as well. Oh. But um, yeah, so Moose was about. But again. I do remember Moose uh, when there was a rave in Wembley. Uh, I can't remember the name of the rave now, but there was a rave in Wembley. It might have been called Dark Side of the Moon. That's what it might have been called. Mm. And then do you remember the Stonebridge Park Estate? Yeah. So I remember raves in there that, that back in the what? day. Yeah, in the estate. Now that's mad. Yeah, that was mad. That was mad. This was even before Jungle. That was How in scary the rave was that? Days. Yeah, it was a bit peak, but... Again, it was that that edge, innit? You yeah. just went in there and you were like, it was a bit on edge. That and also, sells it. That sells it. Yeah, it? yeah, it it did back then. I definitely felt it had a little edge to it. But anyway, I remember my mate Dave. He was actually uh, me and Gem and I. We were meet studio partners back in the day. But he's also my mate. I went. He went. I went to school, but he was the year below me. I didn't even like him at school. I thought he was a dick. <sighs> but um, after school, I actually become good mates with him. So anyway, Revelations on podcast. Yeah, no, he knows that anyway. I've told him uh, many times. <laughs> but um, but the thing is, is we're still mates now. He's, he's a really good guy. But um, what happened was uh, we had a mate called Dave. And I remember saying, Dave, I need an MC. I need to fancy MCing tonight. And he's like, oh, yeah, all right then. So on the way to the rave, I was like, right, we need to think of a name for you. And he's like, what should we call, call me? And I said, well, look, because I'm fantasy, I in, in my head, I take everyone on a journey through fantasy land. So we should call you reality. So when you talk to them, you're bringing them back to reality. So we become oh. fantasy and reality. <laughs> oh, my God, that's fucking true. And then uh, Dave, uh, big up Dave, uh, he's, uh, I spoke to him a few months ago. It's funny because he messaged me and he's like, bro, my kids are into this, like, SASAS thing you do. Like, and I started laughing. He went, I can't believe it. He goes, I'm going to put you on the phone to my kid um, and you're going to l- let him know that I've known you and I used to work with you. So he put me on the phone to his kid and I was like, all right, mate. And he's like, are you really SAS? I was like, yeah. And he goes, my dad reckons he knows you. I goes, yeah, your dad's a liar. I don't know him. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably winding him up. But I said, no, nah, no, nah, I do know him, I do. But, um, but the thing is, it's funny how his kids, are, he goes, oh, there was this music. And I was like, what's this? And he goes, oh, it's SASAS. And I was just like, this is mad, isn't it? Mm. My mates' kids are listening to what we do. Twenty, well, I think they were like twenty years old. What's the old. secret? What's the secret? I don't know. I don't. I... Yeah. Thanking God every day, and uh, yeah, and um, you know, just being being thankful and being grateful for yeah. what you do and what you have. You know, what I mean, I just think that's a a massive thing. Uh, I read a book recently. And uh, that's definitely something I would never have done when I was younger. But anyway, yeah, it was an audio book, so I didn't actually physically read it. I listened, okay, just to let you know. Yeah, big up audio bud crew. We know you're yeah, out. Yeah, no, I, I do love an audio book now. I've done about, this year alone, I think I've done about 12. But anyway, um, what it is, just, you know when you go for a run? Yeah, just yeah. whack it on, what or if that? you're in the car yeah. on the way to a gig, I'm on my own. Just put, it, put the book that, on man. and just yeah, like yeah. listen to it. It's, 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 there's no point in listening to the radio, no. the, the news feeding us a load of crap that, That's right. that they want us to. They, they're That's not right. really telling us the story, they're telling us the part of the story they want to know. Mm. So I'd just rather just listen, listen to read the books. Anyway, it's funny because when I read this book, um, there was things in there, and I was like, I do that. I do that. I didn't know I did it, I just did it automatically. So and it was like one of the things was just being like, you know, giving gratitude and being grateful for, mm. for what you do and for what you have. And, you know, I always have been like, you know, since I was a kid, you mm. know what I mean? When my dad used to take me to church and stuff mm. like that. So, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like I, I come from an Irish community, which obviously that's a big thing, mm-hmm. you know, um, the 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 church is, mm. a, is a big thing. Drinking's also a big thing. Yeah. So I don't drink. But I go church, so you know. I mean, I took one part. For those of you, for those you uh, are listening or watching, <laughs> <laughs> Steve's wearing this hat that's a, a classically Guinness in look. Yeah, <laughs> the branding, but it says junglist. These are available at freshlids.co.uk, so I'll go give a little plug there. But um, yeah, very, dis- it, d- very uh, deceptive. Is well, that it hat. is the Irish thing. Yeah, it? It yeah is, but yeah. I don't, I don't actually drink. I, I, I have. Weirdly enough, the last time I got drunk. And I've only, I think I've been drunk about six times in my life. And Harry, six times? Yeah. Harry Shotter, Harry Shotter is at fault for two of them. And the last time I got drunk was his birthday. I think it would have been 18th of September. <sighs> Could have been about seven, eight years ago. I never touched a drink since then because we got so wasted. And really? yeah, all I did was let's have one quick one for your birthday. Yeah. Just chink. And once that was it, and then somebody, while I was DJing, someone went, yeah, here's a drink. And I took it. 
next thing you know, I was pissed on, on the decks and I didn't even realise because I just thought... Because you just concentrating. Yeah, I was concentrating. Time. And when I come off, I was like, right. And then shot, I was like, come on, you're in already. And like, so it started pouring. So I was in. Shot, uh, Yeah, shot was I a mean, bad he, influence, listen, man. Shot don't play when he, he comes does, to No, you can't listen. He's, he's an he absolute get animal. He doesn't. That's the maddest. I had a two-day hangover. I can't deal with yeah, people man. like this. Shot as a veteran when he's it comes to that, man. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so basically, um, yeah, so basically we, uh, that's it. I don't drink. I don't drink. So. I, I just never have just I don't don't even like a taste of it how do you uh, well that, well actually that answers it really but uh, a lot of people use that as the crutch of going out and mm. DJing mm. you know you could yeah, be there people, for up to two hours spinning do. yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll, to, to calm their nerves yeah, yeah. even Shotter will have a little I hope you don't mind me saying this he'll have a little magnum yeah. when we're on the way to a gig yeah, yeah. just to warm himself up yeah, like yeah. you know I mean he does love a magnum I don't know how he ain't been sponsored by them because <laughs> the amount of magnums he drinks and Just Juice in it yeah <laughs> Just Juice how you see that yeah he loves a Just Juice but um, you know the thing is is, is yeah like, you know another thing I was going to say when we were talking earlier and it's mm. about you know, anxiety and all of that. Um, to be honest with you, you see, like, when you were younger and you were going to say you're going out on a date, mm. when you before you went and met the person you were going to have a date with, you'd have this thing called the butterflies. Mm. But it's called anxiety now. Mm. But back when I was growing up, it's called the butterflies. Yeah. Right. What's up with that? Yeah, so it's so kind of changed. Anyone who's older, they'll know. But now it's anxiety. And, uh, and um, I just think, you know... Like I always remember Mackie turned around and said, big up Mackie, absolute yeah. Don, legend, Mackie. sick producer, like lovely, loveliest mm -hmm. guy on earth, man. He's so beautiful, man. But um, he he said to me once, uh, we were rushing to get to the airport and I was like, come on, man. And Shabba was like late. I was like, Shabs, come on, man. And he went to me, because he used to say to me, oh, like, you know, talk about anxiety. And I'd be like, I don't have anxiety. I don't know what it is. And then this one time he said to me, that's anxiety. And I was like, no, I just want to get to the airport on time. And and he said, no, but that what you're displaying is anxiety. I said, bruv, if that's anxiety, everybody's got it then. And then what happened is it was really the pandemic that made me realise that we all have it. We all have anxiety. We all have OCDs and whatever. We all mm. have isms. And have you ever watched a TV show called... Um, Sheldon is the character. Uh, the uh, Big, Bang, Big Theory. Bang Theory. Have you ever yeah, watched yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. See, I watched that like only last year and it was when watching that, me and my missus were like, you do that. And then I'd be like, you do that. You know, like not, <laughs> not on that one episode, like throughout the whole f yeah, yeah, 13 yeah. series or whatever. And it was like weird, but it made me realise that we all have a little bit of something totally. in us like that. Yeah. But when we were younger, that was, you just never discussed it. But now people will talk about it. That's and it's a bit more of an open, it? a bit more of an open conversation. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's a funny, it's funny how... It's the the t the topic changes, the conversation changes with with subjects like this because, mm. like you say, it used to be butterflies. It wasn't it wasn't anything yeah. to be worried about. It's yeah. part of the course. Yeah. Yeah. But but when you've got like the the, the majority of the demographic all having the same problem, yeah. it suddenly gets discussed yeah. and discussed and yeah. differently. Is that demonised slightly? The well, I think, uh, to be honest, before the pandemic, I was, if anyone said they had anxiety or whatever, I'd be like, yeah. you know, but I think the pandemic made me realise, oh, damn, this is a real thing because yeah. I see some people that I would regard as the most straight up hardened this people that were like solid you, yeah. they would never buckle under anything i see them buckling under yeah. that under that yeah. during that pandemic where i had to reach out to a couple of people a couple of people i hadn't even spoken to for years and i was like yo you're right and they're like yeah what's up and i'm like i'm just see your post earlier on it made me think like is everything all right and they're like thank you thank you for the call and i'm like I'm just i'm here like i know i know yeah, spoke yeah. to you for five years but yeah, yeah. I'm here if you need to talk, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? That's, that's and like, look, if you're watching this and you're this far in, big up, yeah, big love to you. Yourselves. But secondly, if there's someone you're thinking of now that you haven't reached out to for ages, just drop them a text. Yo, what's going on? If they're like, what's up? You say, nothing, I'm just checking in mm. on you, man. That's why that really goes a long mm. way to lift someone's spirits, mm. do you know what I mean? A thousand percent, bro. Yeah, and you don't realise, yeah. you don't realise like how something like, something as simple as a two-second text mm. can just... Change everyone's change. Change mindset. that. There might that that they could be having a crap. I tell you what, there was this guy, Australia. Big up Dan. Yeah, 
I didn't know this at the time, but I, I, during the lockdown, because Australia were, sorry, New Zealand was running at a different time to us um, in terms of the lockdown. They were kind of real hard. Yeah, they and were it was really like, hard. Yeah, it was real hard. Canada yeah. weren't too far behind it either. Yeah, um, I, did, I didn't really, uh, my boy Jody over, big up Jody, I don't know, I, um, I didn't really, I did talk to him, but I didn't really ask about too much about it. But anyway, it's so weird. I just reached out to Dan on a random one and I just said, I got this idea for a tune. Do you, do you want to jump on it? Jump on it, and um, you know, can you like, I'm, you know, can you find a singer or something? Like, or he said I can find. A, anyway, he said he can find a singer, whatever. The, the guy PT sick, right? Hmm. So the tune never come out. But I didn't realise this. About two, three months later, he got a bit drunk, and he messy phoned me one night. He's a bit drunk, and he's like, oh, "I'm a bit drunk," and I was like, "You're right, cool. What's going on?" And he's like, "I just want to tell you something." I was like, "What?" And he said, "You know when you called me." Um, to do the tune he goes I was in a really bad place and he goes I just want to thank you because you really snapped wow. me out of it he goes you gave me a bit of focus and I was like rah I was just it didn't even do you know what nah. I don't even know why I contacted I just thought to myself yeah it'd be good to you know he's a lovely guy it'd yeah, be yeah. good to do something yeah. you know what I mean I, you know I can send a tune to him he can do a bit of work send it back so, it's a know, thoughtless thing of it just, was just yeah Got an idea, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, no, I didn't even overthink it. I just did it. And mm. at that time, he was going for a really bad time. And when, But that was so lovely for him to yeah. say that to me. And we, we're really good friends, you know what I mean? He's such a lovely guy. But again, look look at that. I was complete op opposite side of the world, New Zealand. I just dropped a little text like... Butterfly effect. Yo, yeah. do you want to... Yeah, what, I've heard of this. What mm. is the butterfly effect? Uh, smallest wings right. create the vibration. Yeah. It swells up, makes a big thing. Mad. And then that, you know... The other side of the world, even talking like this, mm. the other side of the world, it yeah. fills the reverberance. Yeah, yeah. To a seismic yeah, no, degree. Yeah, no, no, no. Of course, I, I definitely think there's a, there's something in that. Well, that, that butterfly effect. I would love to just summarise on, on this podcast talking about S S S S and the, the new the podcast. Where I say a new. It's 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 We're formed. Into second season. Yeah, now, incredible. Yeah. and it just feels to me like it's 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 got it's now expanding. Mm. In so many different avenues, I guess it's become a bit of a lifestyle. Mm. Uh, uh, it's becoming its own plat brand, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's well, more I think, than that. I think what what the the thing for us is like obviously we've we've all got stories to tell, whether it's like individually or as the group, um, some great stories. But we also have um, stuff that we feel that people want to talk about. One of the mm. best podcasts we've done was um, what is the what is the next rebellious music? And you know, if you think about it, going back even like back in the day, punk mm. was mm. rebellious, rock was rebellious, mm. uh, you know, hip hop was rebellious. Mm. Yeah, and um, you know, it's um, crazy because Shabba is from a punk background, yeah, yeah. as well as a reggae, and then and then Harry's from a hip hop background yeah, as well as drama. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what all of these music are, are rebellious music, and that that. That was really, people really liked that one. It was mad. And then another one which I thought would have really done well was when we discussed AI because it's funny because Harry hates AI, whereas I'm a bit more embracing of it. Mm. And uh, so what it is, it's good to have a, you know, like yeah. yes and a no context to it. And um, we thought because of this is all new and it was like, we thought that people would love that, but it just seems that music people don't really give a crap about um AI. Well, they're not bothered about it. They're not bothered about mm -hmm. it. So they what they want to know about, um, you know, like what's the next rebellious music or how to make it as an artist or yeah. what's your favourite clubs and, yeah. you know, things yeah. that matter to them in their life. Because remember, things like this podcast, what, what people will do is watch it to just get away from get away the from bullshit it. of life yeah. for half hour, 45 minutes and mm. forget about it. And what I love about our podcast, and it's funny because me and Shabs were in a car with, um, there's five of us in the car. So I said, oh, Shabs, put the podcast on. This is before it launched. And I'm sitting, so Shabs is in the passenger seat. I'm sitting behind Shabs and there's two guys to my right and the driver. And while we're talking on the podcast, they were talking back to us <laughs> as if they were in a conversation with us. And that was a real eye opener. That's amazing. It was mad. And then what's happened is there'll be somebody watching this now going, nah, man, like, what are you talking about? And, you know, and then other people go, yeah, brother, I agree. You know what I mean? And what it is, is it's, deep. it's mad how mm. people will interact with it, even though we can't physically hear. So, so what'd you say? Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You're right. But what it is, we can't physically hear them. Right, but the thing is, is like my mate Mark, mm. uh, big up Mark Breeze and his missus big Bally. Up big up Mark. He turned around and he said to me, uh, he goes, like when your podcast is on, he goes, my missus is 
I can hear her in the kitchen, like, or mulling about doing whatever, and you're on really loud. All I can hear is your bloody voice. He goes, he goes, <laughs> and she's answering you. Yeah, no, you're right, Steve. No, you're right. No, no, I don't, you know, I don't agree with that, but I hear you. And she's she's actually having a conversation with me. I'm not even in the room. Oh, God, I But I just that. thought, when I hear We this, don't hear this stuff. When I hear these stories, this makes me like, wow. It makes you want to do it more because mm. it's engaging content. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure when we sat down here, you had this plan of you wanted to talk about this, that, and the other, and we've just gone, bloop, and we've just gone... <laughs> We've gone wherever we've gone, and we probably still haven't got to many of the questions you want to ask. You know answer. what? You know what? I, I, I go with the open uh, open canvas, of your click canvas, but I, I, I knew that because of your experience in podcasting yeah. Yeah. and the value that you know of within yeah. it, 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 it we, we're following the same image. Yeah. I think. I just didn't have an expectation, but I knew it was just going to be class. Yeah, I knew yeah. that oh, it was going to be you. more than just a Q and A. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, you just got to roll with it, man, and and flow. But no, I, as I say, I'm like, I love your setup here. I think it's brilliant. I, you know, I take inspiration from everything I do. Thank when you, I come man. in, the first thing I did is I said, "Oh, do you link yeah, that yeah, to that?" Because straight I, in. I'm asking questions because I'm always looking to learn. Listen, one thing, and this is not just in music. This is mm. in life. Mm. You learn something new every day. And Every keep day. open to that as well. And always, always, yeah, always keep open mm. to that because the thing is, is like I know more today than I knew yesterday. Mm. I also know more yesterday than I knew the day before. Mm-hmm. And I know, so every day I'm learning and the beautiful thing about what we do in life and music and everything like that is we just keep learning. Like the other day, and this is another thing why I think I might have one of these things that, Sheldon might have, you know, from mm-hmm. the Big Bang Theory. If you haven't watched it, honestly, it's funny. Stick with it. It's such a funny series. Give it a watch, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, the other day, uh, this guy, uh, Big Up Daps, yeah, he's uh, uh, one of our engineers and uh, he, he does the mastering for us. And he told me this little trick in uh, a studio trick. So anyway, I went to do my accounts and I sat down in front of the computer and all I had in my head was this trick, this trick. So I opened up the accounts and I could not, carry on with my accounts until I'd done, opened the studio, the door, and started doing what I'd done. I'd clipped it and I sent it to him and I went, with, without, what do you reckon? And he come back and he's like, sick. And I said, it does, it sounds so much better. Wow. It? In terms of mastering. Yeah. yeah. And um, I just But you were myself, just like so engaged I was so on that. focused. I, and as soon as I'd done that and I'd oh, got myself out of that, that new piece of information I knew, that's it. I went boom. I spent the rest of the day doing the accounts, and they were boring. Yeah. Trust me, they're I so always find boring. Else to do, and I've got to do something like that. Oh, it's so boring, Killer. man. Honestly, it's mm. the boringest thing in the world. Big up all the accountants out there, because damn yeah, boring, yeah, man. Yeah. But anyway, um, um, yeah. So basically, um, yeah. I, I just and you now think you've got one of those kind of OCD ADHD well, that, cases. Maybe, mm. but if you told me, I say no. I'm not none of them. But then. That 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 trait that I could not, I could not go to here without just completing that first made me think maybe. Did that, I might that give have. you anxiety? Was that anxiety? Uh, maybe it was. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I dare maybe say it. I dare say. Do you lot know? Because yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know. We like, hit a brick wall, don't you? Yeah. I just think mm. I, what it is is like I was just so fascinated to see if this thing that he told me would work, that I couldn't. And then as soon as I found out, what did I do? I told everyone I know. Oh, my God, <laughs> you've got to do this, you've got to do that. And then another thing as well, when I get told, shown this new plugin, oh, have you checked this out? Obviously, when you get a new plugin, what do you do? You use it to, you, you overuse it. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. it is, is like really it's Whole supposed era to, of your music is yeah, just that. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be just put on the vocal. Mm-hmm. And what you do is you end up putting it on bass. And then, <laughs> and then three months later, when you actually understand the plugin, you go back and go... Delete, 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 yeah, delete, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you just wasted 10 hours putting it in everything and it doesn't make it sound better. It actually made it sound crapper. You what, know was that what, I mean? fa- what was that base, the fat sausage fattener or whatever? Oh, was. yeah, yeah. Everyone, Come on, everyone, everyone loves sausage a sausage fattener. fattener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, sausage fattener. But, but isn't but that part of like b- being the producer DJ? Is creative. That, yeah, and f- yeah. Fi- f- um, filtering that information to people. You guys love sharing and talking about yeah, something. Yeah, this musical bro, I'm telling you now, you know, back in the day, if you knew how to do something, you never told anybody. No. It was like, it was actually a bit of a inclu- exclusive, like, in the no club. Mm. And it was actually really horrible. Yeah. Like, what I love now, I just think to myself, if I could, um, if I could go, if we could have everything we have now in terms of knowledge for us, back when I first started, that'd be dangerous. Because 
I'm learning stuff now that I wish I'd learned 20, 30 years ago. Whoa. Do you understand what I mean? And like, yeah. I just think even things like like stereo mono, things like that. I mean, I really looked at that during the lockdown. Yeah. I thought, I'm not coming out of this lockdown without nothing. Do you know what I mean? I have to, I have to uh, use this time, yeah, because yeah. like you're not going to be t- yeah. what they're doing. The only thing I really missed with the lockdown was going on the road with the boys, mm. and like um, you know, like I, I see the boys a few times out of lockdown. Like Skibs would drive down, mm-hmm. just come and we'd link up and just you mm-hmm. have a little chat. He'd sit in the garden because you have to keep it just in case any mm-hmm. of the neighbours grasped you up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and like we'd s- sometimes just stand outside on the street, just chatting away, like trying to keep a safe distance. But you still, you know, yeah. when you you hug someone but you turn your head yeah, just in yeah, case yeah, you yeah. don't want to give them anything or they don't want to give you anything and it's it's a sad time really mm. like that 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 time was taken away from everyone but but the thing is is you had to you had to come out of that more knowledgeable than when you went into it yeah that's right and it's I, super important yeah so what i did is i put my head to a load i put my tasks to a load of uh, things and i just try to keep busy and just just um, yeah, just sort of uh, just try and mm. try and get out the other end um, in one piece. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So uh, I think uh, I think that could conclude the episode for today. <laughs> look at that, I'm taking over. Sorry, <laughs> brother. Look, I tell you what. How long was that? It's good. It's good. <laughs> 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 but it's, honestly, it's like it's so refreshing to have somebody that's hey. keeping the minutes, <laughs> brother. <laughs> I, I switched it on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Steve. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the A to Z of DJ Fantasy uh, in the place to be, recognise. I've got to say, man, and I know this in my heart, your history speaks volumes. 45 minutes does not do it justice. No, no. How how long were we, actually? Yeah, it's probably about 45, 50 minutes. That's good. That'd be good. If it was 45, that'd be good. Yeah, should we see? Should we see? Ladies and gentlemen, the right honourable. Big love. Steve Fantasy. (sighs) We are Allah in with our Fashion Killer Keller podcast. Yeah, every time, Tuesday, Thursdays of every week. Yeah, showing up, turning in, tuning in, copping out. Thank you. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Stay lucky, people. Peace. 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 Whee.